Okay, thank you. Now it's time for uh, researcher Lisa Håkanen from University of Lapland in Finland, and she will present participation and social inclusion of the Sami in Finland. And this study is still uh, ongoing, uh, and the mm, report will come uh, in uh, after the summer. Please, Lisa, the floor is yours. Thank you. And hi, I'm here for our research group. So I'm the first one, Lisa Hockanen, and um, then there are also Elsa Laiti Hedemäki and Lydia Heikkilä, and they are not able to be here today, but they are as as uh, they are part of the research group. So <clears throat> this is just a very, very uh, let's say, first marks about my research, and I think, um, I hope you won't think that these are just what will be in, at the end, while we are going to read them more closely. But uh, after listening Margareta, I think that some of these maybe are, they are so nearby about uh, uh, Margareta's findings that maybe there are already some that I can even maybe tell about it. Okay, it won't work. Do you think so? <laughs> okay, thank you. Le uh, so, very briefly uh, about the background of the study. So, you have heard already uh, quite uh, uh, quite much about it. But uh, in Finland, this study is carried out by the discipline of social work in the Faculty of Social Science at the University of Lapland. Uh, and there are two other projects with we are going to cooperate and that way large our knowledge. So the Sara is concentrating on uh, Sami issues and the Vamo is concentrating on uh, disability issues and social work. So we are going to use those two at the project also. And our uh, project manager is Anneli Pohjavala, who is professor in our department. And the public uh, budget you have already heard, it comes from the, okay, the whole thing, but and the results will be coming. <laughs> so, and about the uh, Sami background, because uh, this diverse, even from the Swedish side, so Sami population in Finland is much smaller, let's say like that. So about uh, 10,000 Sami people living in Finland, and uh, the Sami homeland area includes only very northern most part of the Finland, and so most of the Sami is nowadays living outside of the Sami homeland area, and we are trying to get uh, the point of view of those Sami people also who are living outside of the homeland area. And uh, not very, mm, mm, about one of the fur uh, of Sami speaks nowadays Sami as their first language. There are three different Sami languages in Finland, and uh, Northern Sami is mo most speak. There are most speakers of Northern Sami, and then Inari Sami and Skolt Sami. They are now much more stronger than they used to be, because there have been some uh, school and kindergartens and so on. So that's very good thing, because otherwise the situation would be even more worse than it is nowadays. So some things it has already, and about those uh, that we have very few knowledge about the situation, but we have one um, recent research made by Lydia Heikkilä and Elsa Laitihedemäki and Anneli Pohja, who are also working in this research. And it was uh, about, uh, um, according to that research, uh, availability and satisfaction to public services are supposed to be lower among the Sami population compared to the majority population. And I think this is quite near to the Margaret's finding also. And uh, this was uh, made in the Sami homeland area. And nowadays, we, the, in the Sara project, we are, uh, and mostly Lydia and Elsa are doing next work and it is concentrating on the outside of the Sami homeland area and the issues there. And then about the disability, I just pick it up one of a recent report. And according to that, uh, people with disability faced discrimination, as we maybe all know now know here. Some of uh, people know their rights but only very few of them are willing to somehow advocate against the discrimination or make it public. 
So those are maybe those background things. So an about ethical uh, principle of the study, and I forgot to tell. So in the beginning, so I start now that I have no background of Sami by myself. Some um, some family relation to disabilities, but I'm. Not, mm, uh, but in my reference group, it was. In our reference group, it was a little bit hard to figure out uh, what kind of re reference group we can do have, while there are no um, association of Sami people with disabilities. So we have Kalle Könkölä, who is um, um, from the Threshold Association, and it's whole Finnish uh, national <laughs> association. Uh, so, okay, and then Pia Ruotsala from Samidiki, uh, and she has no background of disability. And then Lahja Johansson Lamser Jarvi, who, uh, who is working at Social Insurance Institution and is Sami by herself. And Elsa has Sami background, and she, she has also some disabled relatives. And Anneli Pohjola is leader of our. We have had two meetings until now because we started already not. Mm, four months ago, okay. Uh, I think I have to a little bit hurry up. So this was the beforehand defined focus of our study. So mm, uh, we are trying to change the knowledge of the self-perceived quality of life and the experiences of using social and health services and Sami inclusion and the social inclusion of the Sami with disabilities. And this is very pilot study in the, this area in Finland. And we are trying to figure out some way to make situation better. So uh, I think this I almost skip over, but uh, because there were no registration, no knowledge of those people beforehand, we use our own networks and I think it was quite, it was a good solution afterwards, I have to say, because not networks are quite wide, but of course we won't, uh, that way it takes longer time because it goes through to many persons before we find those one who we are going to interview and then we uh, was we, figure out, we were planning that we use snowball sampling, but uh, with that we the make be one remark is that uh, that snowball won't roll <laughs> not at all because snowball sampling is based on the area that there on the idea idea that there are some kind of network uh, between those people and there we find not at all networks those people were not willing or able to tell any other person that we won't know already. So that way we have to figure to pick up every person by one by one and it came of course it take of course more time. So yeah. And the uh, uh, method was about the same as in Norway first and then Margaret has adapted it and we I think we make it more like Margaret's way. I think so, I'm not sure, of course, uh, because we decided to use narrative orientation. You have more knowledge about the Sami issue, you call it storytelling. I'm sure it is the right way, but I'm not Sami person, so my, I'm calling it narrative and orientation. But I think it has some similarities to you to use. So those interview those people decide themselves which language they are willing to use and if they use Sami language Elsa will do the interviews and if they are willing to use Finnish I'm going to do those and I have done those. So first I made in end of January and we have made until now nine interviews but uh, yeah and we are we have two more coming on. The next one will be next week I think so and so but because it has taken time, uh, I have already analyzed very briefly those first ones. These are just what is just now. Uh, man, uh, what I have just now. And so, like you can see, most of uh, it has been more hard to find those from the southern part of Finland. We are, one more is coming too. It has been, it, 
it is very more easy to find people from the Sami homeland area, but we are not trying to concentrate on only that area. And for, for some reason, because of the age, I think so, most of our people are uh, used the, uh, has Sami language as their first language, even if it is the situation in the whole population in the Finland. Yeah. And these are those, uh, let's say, first remarks about those results. Have I five minutes or something like that? Okay, thank you. Okay, that's nice because I have three slides to go to. So, um, there has, okay. So first about the uh, experiences about uh, using the welfare services, which was one aim of our research. And um, these people were all, has all, um, this, all these people has used health services. Some of them has used also other kind of services. Uh, so they find, most of them really, I have to say, most of them, most of these Sami people found that the focus of the health services is narrow, even too narrow, and the duration of those services are too short. They find that narrow and very competent medical knowledge, it, it is um, very deeply needed, but yet it is not at all easy to access or it is not enough for coping with disabilities in everyday life. They find they need some other kind of uh, services also, but I can't say nothing more about that until now. Mm. Uh, not now. And then about the knowledge, about the benefit and services, and I think this is about to say that about the right as citizen. So it varied a lot, mostly, most of them, they have very, uh, very few knowledge about uh, those services and about their rights. And some of them were, has more information about their rights as citizen, as Sami, or as disabled. But very few were knowledge about all of those issues. So more information is needed, some way to get more information to those people about those rights as Sami, as citizen, as disabled. So I think that uh, informants advocates, advocating for and with, I mean both for and with, and the social capital were deeply needed to be to cut those side table services, mostly they speak about rehabilitation services, but yet not those services are found by those people or they think that they don't even exist because they are not culturally competent, I think so. I'm not sure about that, but I think so. Yeah, so, um, so lost, lost long lasting rehabilitation and services were needed, let's say, much more often than received. Those services are just few points in the life course and they are not at all fixed together and they didn't figure out the situation those people were living. Okay, yeah, so I have to decide which one to take. So I say, so I'm going not very deeply on that, but um, uh, let's say discrimination based on the Saminess and disability, both of them existed, but there were also other issues linked on the experiences of discrimination. And uh, almost everyone mentioned discrimination, discriminative values and attitudes of people nearby them and people uh, and in society. And if there were some risk factors like John were about speaking, same kind of factors, the, it makes it much more hard to, to manage with discrimination. And there were gender, uh, there were those intersectionality, like you can see, I think this will be something to 
speak about it, but I'm not sure yet. So uh, maybe I just uh, this time say that uh, people with disability, they are not a homogeneous group and there are some dividedness between Sami people also. But then also about those coping strategies and uh, these are not... Um, I think that uh, Margaret has those findings that were very near of these that... Um, I wrote it down that... They used told that they were willing to maintain the Sami content. That is the same. They are very willing to do it, but uh, if it is possible, uh, I don't know yet, but uh, they are very willing to maintain it and to find it and to refine it because they are living outside the, those people who are living outside the Sami homeland area, they are willing to refine it, refound it, yes. And it, like you say, they develop their own support. I think uh, that I mean um, the same when I'm about the same when I'm uh, saying that, uh, sorry that they think they have made those coping strategies by themselves with help of somebody, but not always with help of some uh, association or some relationship. Sometimes they feel very isolated. They feel they are, have they made it just by themselves and sometimes with the Sami uh, society and sometimes with, uh, with the professionals, but very few of them has the large network. Yeah, I will, I think, One thing I have to say that uh, uh, there are very, let's say, these are something I would not prefer to found, but I have found it that some use as a coping strategy that they narrow down the communication with disapproving nearby society. I mean, that is very deep isolation then. So, and this, these are just the few first findings and not the uh, film maybe not be the last months but if you are willing to contact to us please do it and it is always first name point surname and then the rest of it and you can email to me or to Lydia or to Elsa Laiti Hedemäki and Elsa Laiti Hedemäki you can write to those other people you can also do it in Sami language and to me in English or Finnish. Okay, <laughs> thank you.